Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by the Food Center of New York, so thank you, Food Center of New York. It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out that I actually set up a trial every single time the Food Center of New York sends me flutes. I tend to think of them as reviews, but actually the process in which I do the reviews is exactly how you would do a trial. I guess this is a bit of like a behind the scenes. I have learned a lot in the process of doing this. So I thought I would share it with you guys. I am sitting on my bed right now, as you can see. I do have like a box there, some stuff here, my flutes here. You may also notice that the lighting looks impeccable in this room today. <laughs> and it's because I do actually have my lighting set up here as you can see. That's actually my personal flute box, just so you guys know. Of course, yes, you open the box, take out the flutes. We'll talk about that in a sec, but before you open the cases and you touch the flutes, I will go and wash my hands. There's actually a specific reason why I wash my hands. It's because the acidic content in my sweat is very high, apparently. I don't know if it is still that high now. I only found out a few years ago that I actually have a bit of a digestion problem. For a few years, I had to take digestive enzymes and like the high potency kind to help me break down my foods. I have a suspicion that my diet actually affected the acidity content in my sweat. I still wipe down my flute every time I play, but I do it more out of habit now. I didn't realize how oily I am until I met my boyfriend. When my boyfriend touches anything, and this is especially apparent on phone screens, he does not leave oil streaks. I thought that oil streaks were normal, but you know, apparently they're not. My phone is absolutely disgusting. I mean, I can show you now. Do you guys see that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, you see that now? Oh yeah, look at all those oil streaks. If I don't wash my hands, every flute I touch is going to look like this. The other thing is I also had a snack, got my empty bowl. I also had some water, but water is not actually enough to get everything out. So I also need to brush my teeth. I don't want to blow random crap into new flutes. Technically speaking, these aren't new flutes. These are actually my flutes that I am demonstrating on, but you know, you get the drift. Let's leave the beautiful brightness of my room and go to the bathroom. I'm back, teeth are clean. Now, before we actually get to like touching the flutes, we gotta make sure that there are a few items that are not on your body. Chiefly, rings. Rings by far are like the biggest culprit of jewelry scratches in the flute world. Now you'll notice that most professionals will still wear their rings with their flute, but that is because they own the flute. Now, if you absolutely need to wear a ring, you can actually get silicone rings. They're really cheap on Amazon. They're like somewhere between like 10 to 20 bucks. That's why my watch is actually fine. This is rubber. The only metal part is this part, which does not actually come in contact with the flute. Sometimes you'll see me wearing a necklace as well. It's this thing, beautiful little thing. It sits like right here at its full length. It's not long enough to get caught on the flute or anything. But if you're wearing long pieces of jewelry, take them off before you do a trial because the last thing you want is for it to get like stuck between the mechanism, which brings me to my next point. The reason why I have this guy sitting on my bed is because if I'm like wearing a scarf in a rehearsal and I put the flute down in my lap, I will often get these tassels stuck between the mechanism. You see that? That is my wall of scars, but even I will take it off. Now, I use my bed as my work surface. As I have repeated several times on my channel, I work in this tiny room. It's a nine by 11 room. In terms of having a big work surface to work on, what better work surface than my bed? You got lots of surface area. The first day I brought my flute my new flute, my new professional flute 
into music school, I was practicing at a piano. And when I went to put it away, I accidentally nicked the really like thin joint at the end of the body that connects into the foot joint against a corner of the keyboard. And the whole joint like folded in. Do you see why I prefer using a work surface that is soft and does not have hard edges. With each trial, you will get three flutes that come in to you in a box that is about this size. You don't have to arrange it exactly as I do. I'm just showing you how I do it because this way it just keeps everything super organized. Flute one, flute two, flute three. This guy will need to be on the floor. There he is. Now you can see I have a whole lot more work surface to work with. I take each flute out. I will put them next to its corresponding case. Obviously these flutes are mine, so I don't have an invoice, but I will usually have it sitting right here just so I can like check what the specs are. These flutes are very different and you can even see their cases look really different. But a lot of times I will actually end up getting flutes that are from the same company that have identical cases and the flutes will almost look identical too. I advise you to have some sort of system like this so you don't even have to worry about like which flute you are working on. Now the nice thing about the Flute Center of New York ones is that they have actually little labels on the side. They're sort of like shorthand for the specs of the flute. You see how I've partially zipped this up? It's so if I hold it up like this, you see how it keeps together? Oftentimes you'll actually see like inside the flute, there will at least, at the very least, it will have a bag that has this guy and this guy in it. So polishing cloth and cleaning cloth and then you'll have separately your cleaning rod. Let's say it was closed like this but at first glance I didn't realize that it was open. If I hold it like this you see how everything's just gonna fall out. On that note I do keep all of the extra little accessories inside each corresponding case. The only time I take them out completely is to film it to show you guys. A lot of these accessories I mean, they're like, they're pretty much the same accessories, but they're branded slightly differently for each company. And I do not want to mix them up. Do not use any of the accessories. They are not yours yet. If you use them, essentially you'd be getting your finger sweat and slobber onto these cloths, which renders them unsellable. The Flute Center of New York will actually have to replace them. If you don't have any, like let's say you're a beginner, they're really cheap, let me tell you. You can get a plastic cleaning rod for like a couple bucks. Even if you wanted to go crazy, crazy with this and get like the best one, this silk cleaning cloth is only like 10 bucks on Amazon. You can also get microfiber polishing cloths for flutes that are also very cheap. Make sure you don't have any like liquids, open liquids in cups like this, just kind of like laying nearby. Also make sure you don't have any food. Keep it away from the work surface. If you absolutely have to have liquids nearby, make sure they are in closed containers. At the very least, it needs to have a cover preferably with a lock. You want to make sure there are no crazy heavy objects that can potentially fall on the flutes. Also make sure you have lots of room. When we play the flute, we're holding the flute out like this. We need a very large radius around us to move around. You see how I can move around like this and not hit anything? I'm not even hitting my lighting. I think what I prefer is more like a four foot radius around me just to make sure you don't hit anything. My arm is getting tired so I put you guys on my desk for now while I talk about what you actually try when you are trying flutes. I have found that I have basically adopted my reviews as the official way that I try flutes. So if you guys wanna do it my way, here's how I do it. I know that all of my reviews start out with me just noodling around on the flute and it's as if I like suddenly know how the flute works. Actually, no. The way I learned to understand a flute is actually by doing harmonics. Literally the only way to make it sound nice is to do it the way the flute wants you to do it. I'm currently still trying to work out how to articulate how I discover exactly how each flute likes to be played. But the process is that I just end up doing a lot of harmonics until I can hit upon a certain mouth shape or a certain mouth formation or a certain way that the airstream is moving through my mouth that suddenly makes the flute sound amazing. <laughs> And each time 
I change harmonics, I can actually feel a shift in my mouth. And what I do then is I basically play connect the dots. So instead of doing these abrupt changes of mouth formations for each harmonic, I'm just doing a gradual thing. I'll go back and forth between harmonics and a scale. <laughs> I'm actually reviewing flutes, so it doesn't matter whether or not the flute chooses me. I have to figure it out. Now, the nice thing is that for you guys, you guys can let the flute choose you. Once I've figured out one flute and I figured out how it likes to be played, I will test out tone color. I'll mess around with dynamics. Then I will mess around with more scales, see how the mechanism feels to me. Do I like its resistance? Do I like how light it is? Then I will also play around with articulation. At the very least, you should test single tonguing and double tonguing. This is because every flute likes the tongue in, in a slightly different position in your mouth and you want to find out if the position on that flute actually matches you. Usually if it's too harsh it means that your way of tonguing is too far back for that flute. If it's a little muddy it could mean that your tongue is a little too far forward for that flute. If it's just right then it's just right. Essentially you want to find one that feels the most natural to you and one that you feel you have the most range and control over. That's what you're looking for when you are trying to pick a flute that you are actually buying. I would also test a lyrical excerpt of some sort, so like a slower passage, and I would also test a technical passage, something really fast, maybe with lots of tonguing. So the idea is to take it on a test run for something that will test how far you can push your tone colors. Will it go with you if you want to go really fast? If you feel that the flute is resisting you, it's probably not the one for you. Quick note, I don't include a lyrical or a fast passage in my videos because of YouTube copyright issues. You figure out one flute and then jot down some notes, put it down, and then do the same process, like starting with harmonics and then like going through all of our little like criteria. Take notes on how you feel about the second one and then rinse and repeat for the third one. I found that to be like a really interesting side effect of me having to do these reviews is that like I have to write notes because I have to remember what I'm talking about when I talk to you guys about them. What ended up happening was I was like, oh, wait a second, like, actually this is a really great way for you to like actually physically see what the differences are between each flute. Now, if you are doing a blind test, you want to have the person that you're doing a blind test with be the person who actually sets up this workspace and then like gives you random flutes. I would suggest that you go through this same process. It's just that you don't know what brand the flute is. Once you look at the comparison of your three sets of notes, you can already kind of pick out which one is definitely not in the running. Put that aside, go through the same process again, but just for the remaining two. By the time you get down to the two and you really like just compare between the two, you'll know which one fits you a lot better. You may they already have known which one chose you when you had all three flutes out in front of you. You don't have to figure them out in as much detail as I figured them out, by the way. You can just try a flute and be like, you know what, this this thing is never gonna work with me and I'm just gonna put it down and it's, it's not it. It's just that if you wanna get the most out of your trial, I would suggest doing it this way. The process that I'm describing here can take a few days. That is why you get an extended trial. We are organic beings, so we we will be different on different days. The weather will change, so you can you can see how the flute will respond when it's colder outside, when it's hotter outside, drier, or when it's more humid. However things are outside do actually affect how things feel on the inside. Don't take it outside though. There you go, that's how I do my trials. Hmm. Maybe I should just actually like box it back up again. All packed up, they would go in that box. Stick a check in there if you want, if you are keeping one of the flutes. I also like to make a copy of the invoice, put it in there so it's just easier on them. What they've been doing for me is with each box, they'll actually send me a prepaid FedEx slip. Don't tape it up in the box with you. You just take that slip with you, bring it to FedEx, and then FedEx takes care of it for you. It's great. If you want to request the trial, all you have to do is go to the Flute Center of New York website, which I will put a link to down below, click on their contacts tab, and then click on request a trial, and then you will just need to 
put in your information in there. You can use my code JAF for all your trial perks. You can get an extended 10 day trial. You can get free shipping. You can take up to three instruments out on the trial and you get an extended 18 month warranty on your new flute. Then you just hit request trial. Very easy. I also noticed that they now have a live chat function. That's new. I like it. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope it was fun for you guys to watch. As usual, if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday, but hit that bell icon because, you know, YouTube's broken. Make sure you follow the Flute Center New York on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll put all the information in the bottom bar below. If you want to follow me on my social media, they're also listed down below. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Do I? I've had a, I've had an eye booger in here this entire time, so let me start that again.